we're here to learn about the Microbit Classroom. So um, Microbit Classroom is a brand new resource and um, the great thing about it is that it is um, a really, really great tool which you can use for remote learning if, uh, if that's what your current circumstance is. But you can also use it as um, an online virtual environment when you're doing face-to-face -face teaching. And um, I heard a quote this morning, which I really liked. It, it was that it'd be a real shame to disabandon the, the learnings that we've had over the last few weeks with the circumstances which have arisen. You know, and I really am a really big um, passionate advocate for technology and education. So I really hope that whilst I'd love things to get back to normal, we don't just forget about all the learning and everything that we've had. So this kind of tool, which we're going to be focusing on today, the Microbit Classroom, will actually help you be able to um, facilitate learning for those who aren't necessarily in your presence right now. Um, so before I before we kick on right into the actual conference, so my name's Simon. I am a teacher and um, and research educational researcher. So um, I'm working at a systemic level now, um, providing support to schools. And uh, this is this is kind of one of one of those mechanisms. Um, my, my history is primary school, and I've got experience um, as a specialist and a generalist teacher. So um, if you do have any questions about curriculum or the technology, feel free to jump in there, whether it's implementation or um, planning, you feel free to just ask. So um, we're obviously doing this um, this. Uh, microbit classroom through zoom if you have any questions at the end of talking about uh, delivering remote learning we'll, we'll be happy to access that as well okay so um, so we are Pacronix and uh, we are an educational uh, institution where we, we helping uh, helping our schools uh, helping schools and uh, teachers and learners of all varieties uh, we provide lots of different types of support um, I recommend jumping onto Pacronix .com.au slash edu and um, you can find out a little bit more about our educational offerings. I'll go into that further on, but um, we do online stuff like this and uh, often they're, they're free so kind of little bite-sized ones. We also do bespoke sessions with schools. So if you want us to come into your school, we can do that. Um, we also sell the um, equipment. We've got online courses, technical support. So there's really like lots of things that we can um, engage with you on. So if there's any troubleshooting or anything with any of the stuff that, um, that you've got, we're here to help. So just uh, drop us a line. Um, so we do provide lots of different um, technological tools, STEM tools, which are used in classrooms. And uh, a lot of these stuff is based on what can really get kids uh, being creative and making and exploring. So it's kind of that constructionist paradigm which is um, underpinning a lot of our work. Um, we are both education uh, edu educators as well as uh, electronic engineers. So we do have a lot of uh, experience in the background. Uh, lots of stuff like Raspberry Pis, Microbits, uh, Mbots, Arduino, Makey Makey, uh, all, this, all the um, components as well as kits uh, are all accessible through uh, Pacronic. So definitely urge you to go and check that out if you're looking for some uh, resources either for yourself or for your classroom. Um, now, here's a nice free um, collection of resources which you can access, and this is all divided up into uh, areas. So you can dive into, uh, get some suggestions or some support based on what type of tech technology you might want to be implementing in your classroom. Um, there's also uh, kind of some troubleshooting guides and other resources from manufacturers in there, which uh, could be beneficial to you. We thought it's all in one in one nice place. So to access that resource, just jump in there to learn.pacronics.com.au. Okay. Um, so the I mentioned before the EDU uh, section of the website. So this is where we can, it kind of gives a bit of an outline as, as to some of the uh, bespoke offerings that we've got, which we can help out with. So curriculum planning, uh, linking curriculum, bespoke workshops for a particular resource or um, curriculum understanding. It's all, it's all kind of doable. So if you want to get in touch about that, um, please do. 
We've got some more webinars. So this one um, is a uh, obviously focusing on the Microbit Classroom, but we do have some other ones coming up. And so you can find out more about those by going to pakr.xyz slash webinars. And uh, they're all free if you put in the uh, coupon code there on the screen. So if you're interested in using Tinkercad Classroom, so that's a very similar um, resource to Microbit Classroom where you can be doing that. So there's some heads nodding there, so I'm a bit of experience. Tinkercad Classroom is phenomenal. So is Microbit Classroom, but you can simulate um, the Arduino um, on wiring Arduinos with breadboards and everything using Tinkercad. You can also get circuits online. You can live simulate circuits with all the different components in, with 3D models as well as just using 3D models, uh, which you can then export and 3D print or um, you know, throw them into a mixed reality viewer. So there's heaps of opportunities with that kind of uh, thing. Also got some M-Block, which is a re another really good um, makerspace type um, uh, resource. So if you wanna uh, learn more about the M-Block platform, definitely uh, jump in there. And as I said, these are all free. And we've got some more um, Arduino EDU content. Arduino have got some really, really good kits. So um, tune in to learn more about those. Um, so what we're going to be going through today is a um, it's a bit of a an insight into some of the ways that you can use the micro bit. It's a bit of an insight into how it works, um, as well as the hardware and software platforms, as well as looking at the uh, actual micro bit classroom platform. So all these things are incorporated in our online courses. So um, if you're if you want to go beyond this session um, and you're actually wanting to get some ideas for planning we've packaged up a whole um, a whole online course which you can do and it's accredited it's aligned to the eight uh, standards so um, if you want to go further than today we've got some online courses which you can do at your own pace you'll get cert uh, certified at the end of that so you can it can count towards all of your um, towards your registration com compliant needs um, and also it's got a whole bunch of teaching considerations, curriculum links, it's got um, e explanations of the curriculum. So there is so much in here. If you don't think, for example, that you're necessarily um, covering, say, the data representation strands, then you know, this is a really good way to incorporate this with the digital implementation. So um, I'd encourage you if, you, if you like the kind of stuff that we're doing today, to get more into this and it'll be more resources and activities for you to do. It's about one, one term's worth of planning, depending on how you run digital technologies in your classroom. It's about a whole term worth of, um, worth of content in here. So it's technical knowledge, it's content knowledge, as well as classroom ready activities. Um, I'll give you the link uh, to that in the chat. So uh, Patik, if you can, oh, it's, it's, on the, um, it's on the actual pacronics.com.au front page. So you can uh, jump in there and you can investigate about those, uh, those courses there. Okay, so uh, let's let's talk about the micro bit. So, um, if you're not familiar with it, the micro bit is essentially a simplified computer. It's a pocket-sized simplified computer. It's got a heap of sensors on it, and it's got the capabilities to output data as well. So, just we'll have a look at the front of the micro bit here. You can see that there's a five by five um, LED grid on it, and that kind of works like a display. So we can. Um, we can program the micro bit to display data or information on there using um, using those individual LED lights. Um, it's also got two buttons on the front of the of the device there, so you can um, input uh, send a piece of information or trigger an event via those a button A and button B. Uh, it's also got a whole series of pins down the front. So if you want to take, again, you want to take your micro bit usage to the next level, we'd recommend getting it in a kit where you can attach, um, you know, light, uh, you can attach ultrasonic sensors or extra buttons, uh, extra LEDs. There's so many things that you can do with that. Gesture sensors, there's so many incredible things that you can do with it. But I'll get into the meaty part that's on the back here. So, uh, there's a battery socket so you can run this thing without actually having it connected to a computer. You can, um, there's a reset button, uh, which will just reset its um, whatever program it's running. It's got the USB connector, which is how you program it, but you can also um, send data and power through that uh, USB socket. On this corner here, there's a radio and Bluetooth antenna. So you can actually get multiple uh, micro bits and you can set up a, um, 
a, a network of uh, microbits. You can get one microbit to send a piece of data across uh, via radio to another one. You can also use this antenna if you want to program the microbit via an iPad, if, you, if you're not utilizing the uh, USB port. Uh, we've got a, the, the processor, we've got a compass on there, so that's going to detect uh, the direction. We've got an accelerometer on there. There's also a temperature sensor on there. So the amount of things when you combine these into different projects, the amount of things that this micro bit can do is certainly more than the $30 which it's going to cost you. It's an absolutely incredible piece of hardware, which is it's open sourced, so that it's, you know, people actually, um, you know, can write software for this. People can um, create external hardware, which you can, um, which you can use to make it even better than what it already is. Okay, so um, the way to program um, microbit, there's a few different ways. This way here um, is, which we're going to be using, is through Make Code. So this is the inherit um, pro programming platform for the micro bit. It is the best um, way to program the micro bit purely because it's what it's built for. Okay, so uh, you can use Scratch. You can program the micro bit through Scratch or you can incorporate the micro bit with a Scratch project, but it doesn't have as many functions as what um, the make code does. So um, definitely good to uh, get kids using multiple multiple platforms but also uh, this one is, is the inherent one uh, so that's um, that's kind of the platform that we'll be using I'll just go into the actual uh, interface so in this part here this last kind of gray little area this is the workspace and that's where we put all the code blocks so that's where we actually compile our code. You can choose to use blocks, graphical programming, or you can choose um, JavaScript. So JavaScript is uh, obviously a text-based language. So you can, you, if, you, you know, if you want to differentiate there or you're doing high school, um, you can use JavaScript if you like. Um, on the left-hand side of the workspace, there's all these categories over here. Now, they're beautifully color-coordinated. So if you ever want to find out where a, um, where a code belongs, or where a block belongs, you can uh, use the colors, but the names are very self-explanatory. So you can um, navigate whatever block you're finding using that um, area here. I'll just give you a little, uh, nice little hot tip here. Just above the categories, there's a search pane. So if, you've, if you're trying to find a particular block and you don't know where it belongs, just go into the, um, uh, the search pane and type in what you think the block might be named, and then it'll actually show up the search results. Now this is a, uh, one of the most powerful things about the make code is that it actually has a simulation over here. So on the left hand side of the categories, there's a picture of a micro bit and this is the simulation. So if you, um, when you compile your code in the workspace, the picture there will actually demonstrate what the micro bit will do when you program it. So it's not a live view of your micro bit. If you have it plugged into your screen, it's just a simulation of what the actual micro bit will do if you download and flash your program to a physical micro bit now that's that's good but think about it this way if you've got kids who aren't at school if you're doing remote learning or you're trying to facilitate home learning for example and kids at home don't have an actual micro bit or a physical micro bit they can do this completely hardware free so they can get everything going and there's some really cool ways one of which we're going to uh, see today in the activity that we're going to do um, uh, which you can which it simulates kind of uh, you know the temperature change or it can simulate the light change or whether it's being moved even so um, definitely check that out um, today as we're using the software uh, I think that's all that's all I wanted to share with you for the moment before we um, jump into the actual uh, microbit classroom so what, I, what I'm gonna do now is just jump here into the Microbit Classroom. Now, I'm not gonna give you the details yet, but I'm just gonna give you a forewarning about when I share the details with you to get you to log in, this is what you're going to see, okay? So I've actually pre, I've given, I've given you the blocks that you need for this project, and I'm gonna get you to use those blocks to uh, create the project which I'm about to explain. Now this is a really good way that you can get some differentiation happening in your class. Um, if, you, if you think that particular students don't need a, um, a structured start, you just wanna give them the, the problem and say off you go, you don't have to give them any, um, any blocks to start off with. If you wanna provide more structure or you know, perhaps you wanna create a variable because you haven't quite taught that part yet, you can do that and you can load this code into the classroom 
and then you can share that with your students. So when they log in, they'll have access to that. So that's differentiation 101. Um, I've shared this with everyone. So as soon as you get in, we're gonna see this code. And uh, it's quite a simple project, but I'm gonna um, get you to have a go for it go through it and then I'm going to talk to you about some of the curriculum links which you might want to draw and, and ways that you can flesh this project out um, because a lot of the, oh, like I've, I've visited a lot of classrooms which are teaching digital technology around the country and um, a lot of people do a really good job with coding but they don't know how to bring in those other elements there can't, seems to be a bit of a misconception about digital technologies that it's purely coding and um, of course that that's not right there are plenty of other areas uh, within the digital technologies curriculum which needs to get covered so um, what i want you to do is to make a light meter so the light meter um, which i want you to create is purely going to measure the ambient light and you can control that in the simulation. But I want the light, when you get it down to, towards kind of darkness, I want the, uh, this icon here, the ghost, you know, ghosts come out in darkness, right? I want, I want the screen on the micro bit to show um, the ghost icon. But if the light level is not low, um, I want to show the happy face. Now, if this is a piece of cake for you, fantastic. I want you to incorporate something else. Maybe you can get some button A and B pushed. Maybe you can use uh, some more branching. Maybe you can use um, uh, some, some other icons or displays or, or variables. It doesn't really matter. So if you, if you think that you're comfortable with that, easy, sweet, go on um, and enhance it, embellish it, make it better. Um, but for those people who just wanna to stick to the project right now, we're gonna make a light meter which shows the ghost. Um, if the light level is low. So I'm gonna let you explore that. Now, the best thing is gonna, as you go through that is I'm gonna be able to keep uh, up with what you are doing. So here in my microbit classroom, you can see that I've got a few different tabs up here that I can use. So as soon as you, lo as soon as you create your classroom, there's a set of instructions. Um, over here, we've got the dashboard, which is the login details. And then over here, I've got your, my student's code. So as soon as you log in, I'm gonna be able to see that you're logged in and you're online. And I'm gonna be able to see live updates of the code that you are creating. So if I say, oh my gosh, this person is smashing it out, they, they don't need any help, or they need you know, an extension, I can actually see that and I can assign that to them right then and there. Um, whereas I can also provide support for those who I identify need a little bit of help. So here we go. The moment you've all been waiting for, I'm going to get you to go um, to this website and put these details in. Um, you need to go to microbit.org slash join. Pathix just popped it in the chat. So you can just click on that link. And then when you go to that, you'll have the um, option to put in four different icons. We've got pink, hamster, sailboat, and sunglasses. And then underneath that, you'll have a pin. Just pop your pin in. And then as soon as you get that, you'll be ready to go and start creating your code. And I'll keep an eye on um, who's joined and who needs trouble. Uh, the, the details are all in the chat. So if you want to refer back to that, uh, it's there for you. Um, I'm, going to navig I'm going to navigate my screen over to my student code. So refer back to, I'll, I'll leave it on this joining details just for a moment, just while you all jump in. The micro bit is using an eight bit system. So uh, it's the maximum level which the micro bit can recognize is 255 and the minimum level is zero. So that isn't, that isn't related to a piece of um, specific um, light level, but it's the amount of light, which it's, which it is um, being able to see. So what it, what it's doing, the reason why it's 255, and this is one of the things that I was gonna talk about, about what you actually might wanna discuss with your children. In years five and six, it starts to talk about um, having whole numbers, how uh, computers represent data using whole numbers. So 255, you know, like we hear the number 256 often, the new iPhone's got 256 gigabyte, um, you know, you might have a, um, you might remember, you know, 256 color. Uh, so there's lots of different um, occurrences of that number 256. So um, 255, uh, including zero, so zero all the way up to 255 is 256 values. So the reason why two, the computer uses, or the micro bit uses 255 as the maximum light level is because it's using an eight bit system. So eight bit is one byte. So one byte is, um, is eight, an eight bit byte is um, eight 
places of ones or zeros. So uh, a zero in binary, if we're talking eight bit, is eight zeros. And then the number 255 in eight bit binary is eight ones. So that's the maximum value that it can get. And I don't know if you're familiar with binary, but um, with it's a completely different number, base two number system. So I definitely recommend um, uh, going through that to the students. But this is like this is critical, and maybe this is my pedagogical uh, or, or my paradigm coming out a little bit. But this this kind of um, question is going to come up in the classroom. So I think it's really really important that this is the kind of path that you follow because this is the thing. If that's if that's what intrigues your students, then what a fantastic learning experience to be able to integrate not only digital technology and you know those curriculum areas but also uh, science for example I think did you want to jump chip in there no uh, you you are exactly correct uh, that's the best way to explain to students I'll also uh, add in the reference link in the chat you can keep that handy it has all the information about all the functions of the micro bit so if you want to go more into details, you can find uh, complete resources there. Uh, and basically for our exercise, the 255 will represent the room is bright or dark, uh, sorry, brightest level. And zero will represent there is, um, it is dark or uh, less, very, very uh, less light. Yeah, cool. So um, I'll just get you to um, to get come back to my screen if you if you're comfortable to to just kind of leave that project to where you got it. I can just I'm just going to go through a few people's projects so you can see what it looks like from the teacher end of um, Microbit Classroom. So um, up here I've got I'm on my student code um, tab. And it's when I've got this, I can see all my students listed down here and I can select which student that I want to go and see. So um, Georgia, I, this is, I hope you don't mind me sharing Georgia, but Jera's, Georgia's got her um, her project here. So this is what she's done. She's, um, she's inside the forever block. She's put the if statement and the condition of the if statement is whether the light level is less than 20. Um, and a really great question which Georgia posed there was what is what does 20 mean so it would be a nice experiment to actually work out you know what 20 is the equivalent to um, and then if it is less than 20 then um, it's a uh, shows the ghost otherwise it shows the happy face now I just um, I'll just show Alicia so Alicia took her um, code and uh, embellished it a little bit so she's got an extra step here she's um, got another she's put another um, statement inside another condition inside the if statement so she's pressed the plus sign down here and and um, created another statement uh, another condition and that condition is if the light level is greater than 170 show a happy face else so that's if it's not less than 100 and it's not uh, greater than 70 so you've kind of got a sweet spot there uh, what's this icon here I've always I always find it funny does anyone know what that icon is oh it's that one Fantastic. It's the, uh, what's that one called? I don't know. Okay. It's the okay symbol. Nice. So, um, yeah, so that's a, like a, a way that you can kind of get a bit of a middle ground there. I think, um, which that program is going for. So you can toggle through your, um, your, your students and you can see how they're going. So like I can say here that Michael hasn't finished his yet. Um, but he basically has all he's got to do is just drag that one in there. So I can provide that individual support, um, privately or, um, you know, I could, uh, you know, generally, I could show that, ask, answer that question generally throughout throughout the session. Um, so then you can see, um, you know, other people who how they're going and whether or not they need a little bit of support. So um, it's a uh, it's a really good uh, resource, the Microbit Classroom. Definitely recommend having an explore with it. And the best thing which I like about it is no one has to sign up for anything here. So um, I don't I don't have an account which I'm logged into. You don't have any accounts which you've had to log into. So it's really, really quick and really, really easy. Now, uh, the last thing that I wanted to show you here within Microbit Classroom was that uh, you can actually save your, uh, um, your classroom and uh, you can end the session and then resume a session. But you can also download a classroom file. So I'm just gonna download the, um, a report for all of my students and show you what that looks like. So, um, you know, at the moment, 
I'm, I'm not sure in, in any of the other states other than Western Australia, but the, um, uh, the assessment authority has just said over here that we don't have to assess to a five point scale. I'm not sure if that's uh, the same thing in, in all states, but um, basically we don't, we've, in Western Australia, teachers only have to report, give a um, progress report. So um, that begs the question, what kind of data are you gonna use? You know, like what type of data are you going to be using for these types of um, comments and assessments? Well, here's one way that you can have that you can access all your data really, really easily. I've just pressed on my um, download report for all students here, and then um, it's downloaded a uh, a Word document. So if I open that up, um, so here you go. You've got your data, which uh, you, you can see the progress of what your students have done over the course of that lesson really easy way just to collect all that information, save it, file it, bang, done, justification, if anyone um, anyone asks for any learning evidence. Okay, so um, that's that. I just wanted to come back to um, the, the project over here. So I'll just keep George's um, project here on the screen. Um, oh, actually, what I want to do before we do that is I might show you. So George, you finished this really, really quickly. Uh, what I can actually do is I can create a new project inside my editor and I can, let's if I drag any other um, project which I've created, so this is obviously the answer, so I wouldn't probably send this to my students, but um, you know, you might change it up. If I've worked out that someone's finished really easily, if I click share code with students, I can actually choose who I want to, who I want to share that with. So now, um, I've just sent that code through to Georgia and then it should pop up on, um, on her screen there, that this new code. So that's a really good way that you can provide um, a bit of an extension or if you want to structure it more for them, you can do that on the run. So it's a really good way just to keep really live updates with your students and, um, and make sure that you're providing them with the most challenging, uh, appropriately challenging learning uh, for, their, for their benefit. Okay, so um, I was just going to go into um, this how, about how you might expand this into a greater project. So this is what our um, this is what some of these online courses start um, start diving into. But you might want to talk about data representation here. So uh, the idea of having on and off, um, which is you know the ones and the zeros in binary. So this comes in when we're talking about data representation. So that part of the curriculum. Um, how, how can you code this symbol here, this ghost symbol? How could you code that on a piece of paper? So, you know, like you could set up a five by five grid and you could just write numbers in it, zeros and ones, you know, where a zero is don't light up that, um, that pixel. And then a one is that you do light it up. So it's basically you could create your own color by numbers. So that's a really good way to get students to think about um, how data can be represented in different ways. So um, you dive really, really deeply into it. You start going, well, you know, a picture is made up of all these different, um, all these different pixels, and each pixel is an individual colour. And computers don't understand colours, so how does it know what colour to put it? So then you might dive into like hex codes. So um, you might look at um, how. Uh, each color is represented by a hex code, which is six numbers or letters. And then if you go really far into that, then you can start to explore with them. Well, uh, the first two of the six um, symbols in the, um, in the hex code is the percentage of red. And then the middle two are blue, and then the last two are green. So every single color which is displayed on a computer screen has an individual um, has an individual hex code, a unique hex code. Um, and then uh, you can talk about, uh, if you go, if I really wanna go into it, you can start uh, introducing that 255 thing that I was talking about before, because it talks about um, the amount of red in a given color is between zero and 255. Why? Because it's a, um, an eight bit system. So that's how you can start to dive into data representation. So whilst this might've just been a really kind of basic um, branching and looping exercise, the opportunities to, to, to expand this beyond into the uh, greater curriculum and make this a really solid project um, are really, really great. So um, again, uh, we've got a, a special um, deal for anyone who um, wants to participate in, in the online courses. So as I said before, it's all registered, so it all contributes towards your compliance um, 
uh, achievements. But um, if you finish the course and uh, it's not, you know, it's not a pass or fail, you will finish it. Um, you got $50 um, store credit at Pacronic. So after you finish the course, you can buy yourself a couple of micro bits um, for free and, uh, and start actually putting them into, into real use. So if you want to get to any of these courses, just go to um, pacronics.com.au and uh, the links there on the screen. But as I said before, they, they are teaching their teacher considerations within curriculum links. It's all the planning that you need to go into your classroom and deliver a term's worth of learning, especially if you don't have the, um, the technical knowledge, you know, really, really, um, you know, perfect. If you want, it goes through all those explanations there. You want to know how to explain variables to, a, to your class. There's videos and resources there for you, which you can actually put on for your class. You can, um, you can actually uh, you know, show them the videos, get them to do that. So if you're interested in that and you want to get that $50, uh, jump in there at pacronics.com.au. Um, as I said before, we can do some online um, PD. So if you have any further questions or, or you, you want further support, um, we can do online, um, whether it's whole school or individual, and this could be custom to whatever your needs are. Um, we like to keep those down to um, a small group of people so we can collaborate and uh, communicate. So jump in there if you're interested. Um, and uh, we can come out to your schools and, you know, help out with whatever your school might need. So if you do have any questions there um, or, or you want to you know, develop your staff or anything like that, we, we're happy to come and chip in. Um, now, we would love to have your feedback on this session. Um, we all, we, you know, feedback is really valuable to us. So if, you can, um, if you're interested in winning another $50 voucher, um, just jump on to pakr.xyz slash feedback. Um, give your feedback and uh, get in the running to win um, some money. Um, all right, so uh, pa uh, Pathik, did you want to um, finish the session off with anything or um, can, should we open it up to questions now? Thank you everyone for coming in and thank you Simon for taking this presentation. Uh, I think you have covered everything. So if anybody have any questions, technical or just generic, if you need any help in terms of microbit or any other product, feel free to unmute your mic and shoot your questions. We'll stay here for a few more minutes and uh, answer all your queries. Or, or pop it in the chat there if you're um, a bit gun shy. But otherwise, thanks for coming along. Really appreciate your time, particularly given everything that's going on. Hopefully we catch up soon. Cheers.